All right, in 13.3, we're going to solve quadratics by taking the square root. We've solved by graphing, we've solved by factoring, and now we're going to solve quadratics by taking the square root. So here you have the game plan. And what you're going to first do is isolate the quadratic portion of the equation. You're going to take the square root of both sides of the equal sign. Now, make yourself a little note here. When we solve quadratics, which is what we're going to do today, um, Any time that you add, when you bring in the radical when, to solve it, you then have to put in the absolute value bars. Do you remember the rule about if you take an odd number out of an even index or an, e an even root, you have to put absolute value bars? And then way back when we solved absolute values, Remember, we would take what's inside the absolute value and we'd solve, set it equal to the negative and to the positive way back when. And so instead of doing that, we're kind of taking a shortcut and we're going to start using this plus or minus symbol to show we're, we're considering the positive and the negative from the absolute value. I'll show you how it works, but here's the rule. Anytime you do the square rooting, it's not given in the question, you got to do the square root thing. So here it is, when you take the square root of x, you always do the plus or minus. So I'll show you how it works, no big deal. Let's look at number one. Um, x squared minus four equals zero. Well, you're, you've been factoring forever, so you can probably recognize this as a difference of squares. Well, you're gonna see we get the same answer by taking the square root, but let's just take this one step at a time. The plan says, isolate the quadratic. Well, this is the quadratic piece. So I need to move the constant part over by adding 4, right? So I'll have x squared equals 4. Now I need to take the square root of both sides. So here's that square root rule again. Remember, I have x squared, so I'm going to take 1x out, but it's, a, it's an even index. And the rule was if you take an odd amount out of an even index, we have to put absolute value bars around it. And so we get a 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Now, instead of saying rewriting it two different ways, we're just going to take the shortcut and take the absolute value bars off by doing plus or minus 2. Instead of having to write it as two separate, we're just going to combine it that way. So x is equal to plus or minus 2. There's my answer. So the fundamental theorem of algebra says, remember the power right here? This is the, um, the degree of the equation. That tells you how many answers you will have. So this is a two, I have two solutions. Let's try number two. X squared minus 36, very similar. We're gonna start by moving the constant over here. So I'll have X squared equals 36. I bring in the square root and I take an odd amount out of an even root. So I have to put absolute value bars around it. Square root of 36 is six. And then I drop the absolute value bars by rewriting that 6 as plus or minus 6. There's my answer. There's the two solutions. It has a degree of 2. So we're good. We're covered. Now let's up the complexity just a bit. Look at number 3. This one has multiple terms, right? 9x squared minus 2 equals 62. Well, the rule says isolate the quadratic. Here's the quadratic term. So we're going to get that by itself first. So I'm going to move that 2 over by adding it. So I have 9x squared equals 64. Isolate the quadratic part is the x squared part more specifically. So I divide by 9. So now I have x squared equals 64 ninths. Now that doesn't simplify. So we're at the point of taking the square root to get x by itself. So if I take the square root, when you take the square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the top and the bottom. You take it separate. Remember, if you take an odd amount out of an even index, we've got to put it in absolute value bars. Now, what's the square root of 64? It's 8, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I don't want to leave my answer like that. I want to get rid of the absolute value bars. I can do that when I add the plus or minus in front of the 8 thirds. So there's my answers. All right, look at number 4. 12x squared minus 144. Let's move that 144 over. So 12x squared equals a positive 144. Divide by 12. 
and x squared is equal to 12. All right, now we bring in the square root. Now we have to employ that rule since it's an even index, taking one x out. Now I have square root of 12 is not um, a perfect square, right? So it's, remember it's four times, four times three. So I, if I do that, I can pop a two out, right? So I have absolute value of x equals two square roots of three. Now let's get rid of the absolute value bars by using that plus or minus two square roots of three. And there it is. Let's try some other ones. Number five. All right, isolating quadratic term, this is it right here. We want to get this x squared by itself. So I need to move this piece over equals 30 divided by 5. That gives me x squared equals 6. Now I bring in the square root. So I have to do the absolute value of x equals uh, square root of 6 is not a pretty number, so we're going to leave it as the square root of 6. Now we bring in the plus or minus, and we get rid of the absolute value bars. And there's our answer. All right, number six is, looks a little bit different, but we're gonna treat it very much the same. We're gonna start by moving that 10 over to the right. We're gonna leave the x minus five squared as a unit. Just consider it like an x squared. And just like on number five, when we got the x squared isolated, we took the square root, right? So it's the same thing. We're gonna take the square root. Now, x minus five squared means there's two of these, right? So I can pop one out but I have to do it in absolute value bars, equals the square root of 10. Okay, that doesn't reduce or clean up to anything nicer, so we're gonna leave it. Now, get rid of my absolute value bars by putting that plus or minus square root of 10 on the right. Now notice, x is not completely by itself, so I need to move this minus five over by um, adding it to the right. So I'm gonna have x equals five plus or minus the square root of 10. And this is the way my answer will look, and that's fine. You want the radical portion to always end up in the back. Let's try number seven. Okay, same idea. We're gonna take this constant term on the back, move it over first. Becomes negative six. Now I need to get rid of the negative one. Have x plus three squared equals, now it's positive six. Now we have a squared term on the left, so I'm going to square root it. x plus 3 comes out, but it's within absolute value. To get rid of absolute value, I'm going to use the plus or minus. Now it's x plus 3 equals plus or minus 6. Moving that 3 over is going to make it a negative 3. All right, there's what my answer will look like did back on five, six, and seven. All right, I have actually just one more. All right, let's try one more. Let's move, take the back end, move it to the right. So I have negative two, x plus one squared equals negative eight. Divide by negative two. So x plus one squared equals negative divided by negative makes it positive four. Take the square root of both sides. So hopefully you're beginning to see the pattern here. Now the square root of four is um, two, right? That's great. Now I get rid of my absolute values by putting the plus or minus two. Move the one over, it becomes negative one plus or minus two. Now, this looks a little different than our previous question because our previous questions, back here when we had the plus or minus, we had a radical that was a, some ugly decimal, right? It wasn't a whole number. So number eight is different in that you can end up with a whole number right here and a whole number here, which means you need to just finish the question. Don't, don't leave your answer like this, finish it off. Remember, this means x equals negative one plus two, which means a positive one. So there's one solution. And it also means negative one minus two. So negative one minus two would be negative three. So here's my second solution. So you want to finish it as far as you can. If it ends up with whole numbers like this one, then take it to whole numbers. If it looks like our previous ones, then leave it in radical form. Like this makes sense. And let me know what questions you have when you get to class. Good luck.